so I can really see through the eyes that I'm using the God that you are. And through my awareness, the awareness of what I see in the mind that is infinite, the mind that is everywhere, must demonstrate through anyone who's tapped in. And so when I can look at any individual, when I can look at you and see God, I am claiming, I am claiming my power of self-love. See, love is not something you feel. Feel. It's not an emotion. It's something you are. And we've been exploring this idea of self-love for the last month. And we identified that first thing we did is, so what does it mean to be self-love? And we determined that we had to know who we were. We had to uncover the mystery of life and what it was that was expressing as us. And we realized that we take a step of faith in that discovery. And that state of faith is going from the idea that there is one infinite divine beingness, presence, creative power in the universe. And being that that creative power in the universe is infinite, then we are the expression of it individualized. And while there is an appearance of separation, there is the truth that there is never a separation, that we are always at one with it. And you say, so the leap of faith that we take is the belief in oneness, the belief in the omniscient, omnipotent, and omn omniscience part of God, the all-powerful, the all-knowing, and the everywhere present aspect of what we call universal mind, spirit, God, whatever word you want to give it. And so once we understand this idea of God, we now know who we are. And from that, we start to live with authenticity, meaning we no longer play small. We are authentic that we are coming from our power. We are going to live in that power, and we're not going to settle for being anything less than that. We're going to be the uniqueness of the oneness that we have come forth to be because there's no two people alike. No two fingerprints, no two toe prints, no two people in this planet are alike, nor are you expected to be alike. Are you expected to look like, act like, or be like anyone else? You are here to be your unique self. And if you are trying to make others be like you, there's no love. Because the idea of love is perfect freedom. So we then explored the idea, so what does it mean to be so present that we can be in this state of love? And we, we went to the idea of forgiveness. And we took forgiveness and really made forgiveness something that is meaningful. It's a, a definition that is easy and practical, and it is releasing the past. Releasing our attachment to the past because that attachment to the past holds us back in the past, and we can't live in the moment. And you see all power is in the moment. There is no power in the past. So by forgiving, by saying, I let go, I free myself of the past attachment, and I settle into the moment, taking with me at this moment the lessons I have learned that I desire to express an experience from the past, the clarity that the past gave me, I come forth with that. But I let the past go. Any emotional attachment to it, I leave back there because it no longer serves. It blocks. It holds back. We then talked about the power of no. And the power of no was basically that we say no to anything that denies us that we're the oneness of God. We say no that stops us from anything that doesn't allow us to be authentic. We say no to anything that is not in alignment with our highest vision of expressing. Because if we're not saying no, we're saying yes to conforming. We're saying yes to things that are not a part of our way to come forth, and we get to choose how we come forth. So, bringing everyone up to date to where we are, now it becomes the idea, how do we claim this power of self-love? And the best example that I've got right now is a triathlete. When you think about a person who is a triathlete, to become one, first off, it's a very powerful decision. 
because there are very, 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 very few people in the world that will ever even attempt to swim and to bike in a triathlon. So being a triathlete, first off, it's a state of mind. It's a conscious decision. More importantly, it's a way of life. And there are three aspects to being a triathlete. There's the aspect that we must rest. Rest is an important part of the process as you train, as you embody this idea of this, of this, this way of being is eight hours of sleep a night, your body must rebuild itself. It must regenerate itself. Then the third aspect, the second aspect then is what am I feeding this body? Because this body is a machine, it is a, it is a vessel, it is a vehicle through which I will perform, and therefore the fuel that I feed it will be the performance that I get. So I want to make sure that I'm on a regimen of five, six meals a day of all the proper foods that feed my body, to build it into this athletic picture of manliness, or picture of womanliness, that can go forth and do that. The third aspect of it is the workout. And that is where you have a, a regular training regimen that you swim, bike, and you run. So that by the time you are done, as you've gone through about a seven month process and you're going into that triathlon, you are prepared for the 2.4 mile swim you're prepared to follow it with the 112-mile bike ride, and then you're going to just ease on in with the 26.2-mile run. So why did I use the idea of a triathlete? Because it's the same thing if you're going to be a self-love athlete. It's a decision that very, 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 very few people have made. It's a decision that you have to truly want to be that person, that special person, that unique individual that experiences self-love. And so as a triathlete, there's the rest component. As a self-love athlete, there's the meditation component. So the idea of getting silent, being in the meditation, being still allows the mind to rest, to release all of the past, to release all of these ideas that are no longer serving so that we are able to clear the slate. And as we clear the slate, we wake up, we're rejuvenated from this so that we now can begin again. And so what fuel do we feed? You know, like the triathlete now has the food aspect. What is the nutrition that they're bringing into their life? So when we claim the idea that we're going to be self-loving, we now go to a daily practice of imagination and visualization. What does it feel like? What could it be like? What would it look like? What would I be doing? We let that imagination within us go be creative because we are the infinite mind of God where all creativity lies. And we have now rested. We have gone into meditation. We've cleared our mind of all past thoughts. And now we have the ability to take a few moments every day and imagine a life so grand or maybe in a day we imagine a life this much grander, this much more loving, this much more healthy, this much more abundant, but we're imagining it to be more. And once we've anchored that imagination in two, three, four minutes, not a lot of time, we then go and we visualize it. We visualize it in the modality that is most comfortable to us. It might be that we can close our eyes and we can see it, it might be that we can hear it through the type of music or voice. It might be that we're catastatic and we feel it. But we use this idea of visualization to take the imagination, the imaginary ideas that we've embodied, and we start to feel it. We let our body start to vibrate in the feeling of it. And then we go to the workout. And the workout is where we do things that we call spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. It's basically making a declaration of that which we desire. 
we go into the, the practice of gratitude, giving thanks for what we have, knowing that we already have great stuff and that we're just attracting more. We do the practice on a daily basis of forgiveness. Forgiveness is simply realizing that we will slip into a practice of judgment and letting that judgment go so that we can be fully present in the now. We go into a practice where we become the observers of our thoughts. And each day we try to shift our thought process just a little bit more, a little bit more in the direction of what we've imagined, in the direction of what we visualize, and we try to eliminate to the best of our abilities the thoughts that do not serve us. We eliminate the beliefs that we adopted from our parents that do not serve us. We eliminate the beliefs that the government has put out there that do not serve us. We eliminate the beliefs that our school system and our teachers have put out there that have limited us. We eliminate the false beliefs that we have blindly accepted without question, is this the highest expression of what I choose to be? So every moment of every day, it's about becoming just a little bit more conscious of the direction, the tone, the feeling of what we are thinking and what we are saying. You see, how we do these three things, how we meditate on a daily basis, 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, how we imagine and visualize five minutes, and how we do our workout of shifting our thoughts, shifting our habitual way of thinking. Because remember, this workout, this workout aspect of being a self-love athlete is about building a habit of thought within the unconscious mind where 99% of all of our thoughts come from, that it now becomes the predominant thought so that when we are unconscious, the unconscious is what we've programmed it to be. It comes forth, and now we've shifted the majority of our thought. Therefore, the majority of our thought put into the subjective mind of the infinite, it becomes our experience. It's really a very simple process. It's simple when you decide, when we make a decision that we want to be the self-love in the world. I think Jesus said it the most beautiful way in the world. He says, you must love God above all else. To love God is to recognize the infinite nature of the one. It's to see God in all things. In other words, when people ask me, how do I love God? It's I love life. I don't judge life because here's the key. The second we judge, we cannot be in love because the second we judge, we say there's something separate. And when we say there's something separate, we do not buy into the idea that there's an infinite divine intelligence that's everywhere present and it's expressing uniquely as e each of us. So judgment, when we go into that, and we're going to go into that, everyone here goes into that hundreds, maybe more times a day, and most of it unconsciously. The idea is now, how can I just observe one more time less when I see that and I shift it? You see, this process is a simple process, but we want to take it in our magnificence and we want to implement it all at once and be loved right away. It takes time. There's a natural evolvement in the demonstration in our lives. There's a natural evolvement in how we create. The creative process is so beautiful in nature because nature says you plant the seed in fertile soil. You water it. You let it have sunshine. And then as more of the nutrients go into that seed, it starts to sprout. And then the sun and the water continue to feed it. The nutrients from the ground hit the roots and the roots grow and the flower comes up and it blossoms and becomes bigger. It's the same process that we are using, except we're using the creative process of idea, of thought. It is the process of self-love. 
For when we truly love ourselves, we will take a moment every day to go within, to be still. And in that stillness, we can remember that connection, that sense of oneness. When we self-love, we know that our only purpose is to create. And so we'll create by going in and imagining and visualizing. And in that state of self-love, we desire to have this so clearly that we are willing to commit to the work, to commit to the process of shifting our thought, thinking thoughts that support our new vision, doing affirmative prayer, doing the daily and weekly and monthly forgiveness work, being in gratitude all of our lives, and being present in the now. Self-love is the only goal that is worthy of attaining. Because when you love yourself and you are that presence of love in the world, the world loves you.